So I recently saw a video by the fabulous Mark Gutierrez where he showed us this tiny little amplifier from Amazon. It's a chip based on the LM386 and he basically told us that instead of just buying the chip you could buy this little tiny mono amplifier and you could use the entire thing to make a guitar pedal. I have bought 10 of these and if we open them up you have them right here and this is what they look like. We're gonna get a closer look real soon. In this video we're gonna continue the work that he did in his video and we are gonna make this into an actual guitar pedal with power in and with the jacks and a true buy switch. Because the thing I felt was missing from his video was showing people how to wire this up into an actual guitar pedal with a true bypass. So we're gonna do that now and hopefully if there is anyone out there who wants to build one of these pedals you're gonna learn that in this video and, I don't know, be happy. I have here a old guitar pedal housing. Let me know in the comments below if you can figure out which pedal this is. I have removed the mark that shows you what it is. And you'll get 10 life points if you figure it out. Anyway, you can use any enclosure. You can actually put these into really small pedal enclosures. Because as you probably can see, they are very tiny. And the only reason why I'm using this is because of two reasons. One is, I have this lying around and instead of throwing it away, I'm gonna use it for this. And the other reason is, I have doubled them up to have two of these going in to the other, like this. I think that's the way to go to get this to be something really cool, but you don't have to. I'm gonna show you what I've done to this, but you do not have to follow along completely. This video is more about putting this into an enclosure, so that's the focus, but I'm gonna show you what I actually did to the other one, because I recommend putting two into one pedal. Okay, so let's first start off by looking at the ship as it comes to you, right out the back. Here we have a green connector that lets you screw in wires, and on this side we have a ground, and on this side we have an out. It is written on the back here, it might be a little bit hard to see, so you'll have to look in between here in this little crevice, but you will see it written there, out. That is where your signal out will be. If you just want to put a jack, this would be the jack that is connected into your amp. And if we turn this around, we have four connect connecting pins here. And furthest away, right here, we have a ground. And next to it, we have a ground. Then we have an in. So basically, that's where the signal for your guitar will come in. And then we have a last pin here, who is labeled V. C, C, and that is the positive side of your battery. So you will basically, for power, use this and one of the ground, and then you would use the ground and the in for the input jack, just like on the other side. But you do have to keep in mind that your guitar be plugged in to the in, and your amp should be plugged in to the out. Okay, so here is basically what I've done. Here is the in signal, and what I've done is I've cut away the two pins here that are labeled ground and VCC. And the reason why is because I don't need those pins. On the underside of one of these, you will have all the connections you need. And so, under here, from these connections are jumper cables sorted in place that goes up to this here that is labeled VCC. So it's just a jumper cable in between here. And the same thing with the ground. The grounds are connected. And on this side, I have connected my battery, which I hope you can see. I also put these two flipped around because I wanted the signal to come back out. You're gonna see why I did this later when we go to the enclosure, but you don't have to do it this way. It will work if you do it some other way. Here I have my out and the ground for the out. So I have all these neatly put together on one side of the circuit. And if you look real closely up here, I hope I'm gonna be able to show you the way I've connected these up here is basically I've bent all the legs to stick out like this. They are no longer sticking right up. And the reason why I bent them and made them basically L-shaped is because I want this to be as flat as possible when it goes inside the pedal enclosure. You do not need to bend them, they will work anyway. This ground connection here, it's put in place and bent under and pushed under here. And as you hopefully can see, I'm using the leg bent over like a little hook to clamp the wire in place and I've soldered it. And the same thing I've done here to the out of the first uh, PCB. I put it in, bent it over here and clamped it in place by bending the leg and then soldered it in. And here I have two connections for the power and nothing touches anything. I have covered everything in super glue and put a piece of cardboard under. And that's just because I don't want this to bend or anything like that. I also have a dab of super glue that I've run down the middle 
to glue the side here to the other one's side. All of this that I'm showing you here are optional. Now if you look at this, you get a tiny little trim pot here and they are basically supposed to be set to taste where you want it and then left alone and you're not really supposed to mess with them. Well, what I did was I took my snippers and I cut the legs off so I had the three little legs because as you can see the blue part is elevated from the PCB and you have a leg here. That allowed me to solder wires to them so that I could put on an actual pot. This is also optional, you don't need to do this, but I felt like it could be kind of fun to be able to mess with things and not have to open up the pedal to do so. But I didn't feel like I needed two. You can go with two, but the first stage I'm just gonna try to find a usable place for and leave it there. Now the way you would connect these wires, hope you can see, is that you will have one that is closest here to the power jacks, and that needs to be turned around and connected to this leg here just like the last leg over here is to be turned around and put here. And the reason why is because as you turn the pot, it cleans up. But as a guitar player, you want the more you turn the pot up to be how much more dirty it gets. So it will feel kind of weird to be putting in more and more and more and getting less and less and less. But if you don't put them like this, it doesn't matter, it still works. It might just be kind of confusing. And the middle leg will get connected to the middle over here. I hope you can see, very hard to film these things, they're so tiny. And I'm using a, as you can see, 1k pot. And the only reason why I'm doing that is because I couldn't find in my scrap bin of pieces and parts any lower value. These are actually not even 1k, they are 750 or something like that, at least mine were around there when I measured them. And so if you put another value, because first I couldn't find anything lower than 10K, you will basically have a lot of room in the turning that isn't doing anything. So try to find something like 1K. It's pretty good, but I wish I had something even lower. And one day I might actually go and buy one. So what you're gonna need is something like this. It's actually much easier to do than you might think. It takes a couple of minutes and you need to fiddle around a little bit and have patience, but this is actually pretty easy to do. The next thing you're gonna need are some output jacks, and here I have two. You're gonna need a switch like this, because that's true bypass switch, and don't mind the wires, we will remove. You also will need a resistor, and depending on what kind of LED you're gonna put in, if you're gonna put in a nice big one like this, you're gonna need something like a 2.2K, which I have right here. Don't worry about these wires, we're gonna remove them. You're also gonna need one of these power DC in jacks and you will put one wire on the big lug. I've put a black one because the ground connection and then the last one will have a green wire or a purple wire depending on your preference and that's the lead. The last thing you're gonna need is a pedal enclosure. I have one here and you're gonna need to drill some holes in it. You're gonna need one for the signal in from your guitar and one for the out and one for power, one for the LED and one for the switch. And then optional, a hole for the knob if you want to be able to control something. Possibly you're going to need two holes if you want to control both stages of the gain or whatever you want to call it. Let's now jump in to putting the pedal into this thing. And it's going to be super easy and hopefully you will feel like you can do this. If you have any questions or you think that this is really hard to do, don't forget to ask questions below and I'll do what I can to help you. Okay, so here's the pedal right now and all I've done is that I've put the part in the hole they are to go in. So, for example, the switch is in the hole for the switch. And on the back it will look something like the two legs of the LED sticking up in the middle here. See them? You will have the switch right here. I've already put a little tiny jumper cable here. I'm gonna talk about that more when we get to the actual switch, so don't worry. The two jacks are in their place, the DC in, in its place, and um, the thing magic that you use here. And since some wires are coming off of it, going to the PCB, PCB is hanging. And so now we can start putting wires in the right. And to do that, we are gonna need a soldering iron, you know, one of these. We are gonna need a way to clean our tip. There are a bunch of different ways and I'm not gonna go over it in this video, but I'll show you what I'm using because I used to use a sponge, but I think this is actually a lot better. Again, I'll go through this in another video if you're interested. We're gonna need some solder and we're gonna need some wires. We are also gonna need a resistor and an LED, but as you can see, I put in another LED. And the LED that I put in is actually the LED from one of those small little battery powered candles. 
because the flickering is actually built into the LED and so I thought it might look cool on this pedal. And one of the cool things about making your own pedals is that you can do things like decide what kind of LEDs you want and what kind of color or thingamajig you want them to do. And since Mark is such an awesome cool guy, I feel like he should have a LED in his pedal that is, you know, weird, crazy and cool. Just like him. Yeah. Okay, so let's start from the beginning uh, or something. I don't know what I'm saying. We're gonna connect the output jack to the switch. That's gonna be the first thing we do. And to do so, you need to find the lead of the mono jack or the stereo jack, depending on if you wanna have a battery clip. If you don't wanna have a battery clip, you can just use two mono jacks. But if you wanna have a battery option, you're gonna need a stereo jack. And you basically have to connect the lead with a tiny little wire like this to the middle row. You have three rows, if we look at this horizontal like this. And in the middle, we're gonna connect the output jack, like so. I hope you can see it, it's in, connected to the middle. And now we're gonna do the same thing to the output jack. From the lead of the output jack to the middle row of the switch, like so. Now, just to explain real quickly what is happening is the signal comes in through this jack here. You have to imagine this being flipped the other way, so this jack will be on this side later when we turn it around. But the signal comes in here, and when you press the button, you can either select this lower row or this upper row to be connected. If you select this lower row, we have a jumper cable connected here. So you're going to have to solder the first leg on the last row or the closest to you as you're doing this uh, row from the first leg to the third leg, just like this, leaving the middle leg alone in the middle, like so. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to connect these two wires to the switch. And it's actually going to be pretty simple. And the in here is going to get connected to the upper row's input. Basically, the in gets connected to the in. And the out is getting connected to the out like that. And actually, the only thing the switch is really doing is switching between letting the signal go through this little tiny cable here or going into this cable here through the whole thing and back out here. And for example, if we have this pedal plugged in and powered up, uh, this circuit has tiny little LEDs and they will be lit up no matter what you do to this switch. But you're not gonna see them because they're on the inside of the enclosure. And this little LED that we have here, we're just gonna wire it up to turn on with the switch is pressed and really nothing more than that. So it's basically just tricking you that you're turning something on when what you're actually just doing is just switching mode. Hope that makes sense. If it doesn't, sorry, I don't know what else to say about it. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna connect these black wires. There is one for the input jack and one for the output jack, just like there is an in and an out. So they're just gonna jump to the corresponding places on the actual jacks, because as you hopefully know, and if you don't, I have other videos talking about this, and an input jack has a ground and a lead connection. And so we're just gonna put these ground connection there. And if you don't do that, then your pedal is gonna have issues because everything when it comes to electricity needs to have ground. So I'm putting this first ground wire that is into the input jack, I'm soldering it in place like that. And then I'm doing the same thing here. I'm soldering it to the ground on the output jack. And basically now the two jacks are grounded to the circuit and everything looks the way it's supposed to. Okay, so real quickly now, we have two wires that are coming from the DC jack and we have two wires that you need to take off the ground clip from the battery because we're gonna put in the ground from the jack there. And if you are not gonna have the clip, you can just use the two wires that are going from the jack and replacing it with those. But if you want to use the jack, we are only gonna disconnect the ground and we're gonna connect the ground to the third connection on the stereo jack and it's basically the right channel as it's called the other lead which is in this case not going to be used as a lead but as an extra ground that means that whenever you put in a jack those two ground connections are going to be connected and that's how we're going to make this whole thing connect and now we can just put the new ground wire from, from the DC jack where the old jack went and we can also connect the green wire here that is the lead from the DC to where the clip went. So there's the pedal now and we're gonna put in our resistor for the LED. So if you look at the middle row you have a little leg that stick ups in the middle basically the middle of the middle and we're just gonna put the transistor spoke about four in there solder it in place. And the reason why we want to put a resistor in place there is because basically you're getting 9 volt into the pedal from the battery or the DC in and it will fry the LED because you have an LED that actually has a lower value than 9 volt. If you were to put in an LED that had a value of 9 volt it would handle it and you wouldn't have to put in a resistor. Okay so you have to connect a jumper cable from the plus leg of the LED and put it on the resistor. 
and I'm gonna take this wire I've cut it a little bit longer and I'm basically just gonna twist it around a little bit so that it holds itself in place like so and now we can just put some solder down okay so from the LED down here there is also a minus leg obviously because you have a plus leg connected to the resistor you will have also a minus leg be kind of weird if it was something else anyway from that minus legs we need a ground connection cable because minus is the same thing as ground and this you can put basically anywhere i'm going to connect it here to the jack here because they're conveniently for me very close but don't focus too much on this particular wire just know that it's a ground wire and it needs to go to ground so pre-tin the wire a little bit like you must do with all the wires and then put it in place okay so the last thing we have to do is we need to connect one wire to this middle leg on this upper road of, of the switch. So let's just do that real quickly. I have some red wire here. Let's do it. Okay, so this wire we're gonna pull all the way back through all of this rat's nest of the pedal and we are gonna put it on the 9 volt plus, which is basically a lead connection. Now, I just want to explain what this does. This will connect to this when you push the switch. If you put this wire, the last row's middle leg, it will basically be that the light turns on when the pedal is in bypass. So if you want that, you can put it over there. It's a very different kind of way to make a pedal. So yes, kind of weird, maybe. But anyway, so the wires are all connected and everything looks sort of messy, but we'll tuck it in. You could definitely do a neater job than this, or at least I hope you could. All we have to do now, put it all together. The back of the pedal, will go on its place and we'll take a look at the front. So I have this special little knob that I found for a special guy. So we turn the knob all the way to one end and then we put it on. And I think this looks pretty cool, right? You can just turn this all the way. But we're not done yet because we do need something to show what this is, right? And there he is. Mark, you're no longer just a human being or just a YouTube channel. You are now also a pedal. Well, there you have it. My new beautiful fuzz pedal or whatever effect you would say that this is. If you like the video, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. I really do appreciate if you do it. And also go and check out Mark. I'm going to leave a link in the description below to his channel. He does some really interesting and amazing work. And I really do actually mean that I joke a little bit about him in this video. But I do actually think that he makes some really special and interesting things. He seems to be one of the people who has new fresh ideas and the guitar community really needs it. So I actually do think you should go and look at his channel if you haven't already done so and subscribe because even though he has more subscribers than me i think he needs all of them now we're gonna go and play the pedal and see what it sounds like and hopefully the led looks cool anyway until next time stay awesome and cool and go and build one of these crazy little pedals and put whoever's faces you want if you for some weird reason want to choose my face let me just there you go Thank <laughs> you.